So let's go back to the discussion of Markov decision processes. What is a Markov process? Uh, Markov process is just a sequence of random variables with the property that the distribution of the next variable, st plus 1, only depends on the value of the current variable st. So that means that st plus 1 is conditionally dependent of all previous variables when st is given. So in the Markov process we call st the state of the Markov process at time t and call this distribution the conditional distribution of st plus 1 given st the transition kernel of the process. Now observe that we had alpha and beta parameters in our uh, algorithm for calculating the current belief. This is basically a Markov, Markov process, process because, because the value of these parameters depend only on the current, current values and on the booster. So we have to summarize our belief about which arm is the best. Now, let's talk about optimization. So if you want to optimize something related to the Markov process, then we are ne necessarily talking about what is called the Markov decision process. And uh, in a simple way, you can say that the state of the process S includes all the information we need to make predictions. So the Markov decision process can be defined as follows. So this time step T will be the state of the system take some action AT, and then we will receive a reward. And the next state of the system only depends on the previous state and the current action. And the reward depends on the state and action. So that way we have a transition distribution, where the next state depends on the current state and action, and the reward distribution, where the current reward depends on the current state and action. Now, I think the way to think about Markov decision processes is uh, when you use an example like a maze a navigation problem. So let's say that you have a known maze, you use the description of the maze, and the state of the maze is where you are in right now. And you know that when you take different actions, there's a different probability of ending up in different states. Yeah, so if you take an action north, then with high probability you end up here, and, and with small probability you end up somewhere else. It goes by. Uh, this can be modeled as a Markov decision process where you would like to find the shortest path to this point x by saying that the reward at every step is minus 1. So in the end you would like to uh, minimize the number of steps you, uh, you need to get this point here. And you can also add another uh, point here where you have a negative reward, so you want to avoid this point. So let's, let's go back to the original problem, binds. So in binds, you can define binds as a Markov decision process as well. Um, if you use from the point of view of the, uh, of the problem itself, well, there is an unknown parameter. You have an action to select, and this generates a reward, but it depends only on the action of the parameter. Okay. So there is no state in the sense of the Markov decision process as a dynamical system. But if you think about the problem in terms of what you know about it, at any point in time t, you have a belief about what this parameter is. So you can think of the state of the problem as your distribution that represents your belief. So ct is now the state of your belief. And it's the same idea as having a state for the maze where you are in a particular location. You can think of the state of your belief as what you know about the problem here the state of the maze is what you know about where you are in the maze. Yeah. Uh, now the difference is that this CT here is basically a alpha and beta parameters for every arm. Mm -hmm. If you go back here, we have an alpha parameter IT for arm I at time T, which describes what we know uh, about arm IT, together with this parameter beta IT. So these parameters now are the state of this process. And what we would like to do is maximize expected utility over this process. What's the idea for maximizing expected utility? Well, it's an algorithm called backwards induction. And it's kind of a simple idea. Um, the idea is that at the state of the process, if you knew what was the optimal choice at some uh, state, state of the process, process and you knew what, what was the expected utility would follow uh, the optimal policy there, then you could go backwards one step and calculate the expected utility at the previous step. This could basically be as follows. Well, if at the previous step you took an action, 
then you know the expectability for the given transaction is the expected reward of that action plus the remaining expected utility at the next step. And this is basically the probability of reaching one state times the expected utility of that state plus the probability of reaching another state times the expected utility of that state. And then you have this reward and you have the expected utility if you follow the specific action. So now the actual expected utility of a specific state is simply the maximum over the possible actions you can take in that state. So it's interesting to think about the problem uh, in terms of a uh, simple Bayesian problem. So why does this work? It's very difficult. So the expected utility of any policy can be written as some expected utility that's expanding this one to the sum of rewards over time and this one can be written as 